Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening here in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado, as you can see behind me. If you're new here, I permanently live in my SUV, traveling around taking landscape photos and making content for this channel about, well, you guessed it, landscape photography. Whether it's just joining me for the adventure, seeing how I take the photos, or seeing how I edit the photos, there's something here for anybody that's into photography in general. So if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. And if you're not into that, well, then just keep watching the video. That's okay too. So in this video, I just wanted to compare the new iPhone 13 Pro that I have to my big full-fledged mirrorless camera, which is a Canon R5. Obviously the comparison isn't totally fair, but I think many of you will be very surprised at the results of just what you can get away with on a modern phone. So with that said, let's jump right in. All right, so a few things I wanna get out of the way before we start so I can explain how I'm gonna do this comparison. The first thing is that in the title of this video, I said that the R5 is a $5,000 camera, and I already know there's gonna be a few people in the comments that say it's not a $5,000 camera, it's like a $4,000 camera. The reality is you can't use the camera without a lens, and both the lenses I have are around $1,000, so that's why I put that in the title. More importantly, when I'm doing this comparison, I'm gonna be shooting in RAW for both my mirrorless camera and my iPhone. If you're not a photographer and you don't know what RAW is, it's really not a big deal. All you need to know is that it just gives me more data to work with. If you are a photographer and you know a little bit about it, the purpose is so that I can add my own editing or try to match my iPhone to the camera that I'm filming on right now, which is the R5. So when I take a photo, it just gives me more data to try to match them up, whether I messed up the color balance or maybe the highlights or the shadows are too dark or too bright, those types of things. Again, if you really wanna know what it is, you can always Google it. I don't wanna waste your time trying to explain the depths of what RAW files are. Just know that I'm giving both my camera and my phone the maximum amount of leeway I can to get the best image possible. Lastly, I will be using an app called ProCam on my iPhone. It seems a little bit buggy for the new iPhone 13 Pro slash iOS, I think 15, but so far I've been able to take the photos that I need to. You can also use Lightroom and there's other programs out there. All it does is just make it easier for me to control things like ISO or the shutter speed or just show you what those settings are once I take the photo. The reason I need that is so that I can keep the ISO as low as possible, which just gives me, again, the highest quality image possible when using the phone, which again is what I want so that when I'm comparing it to this camera, it's not obvious which one is which. And that's the last thing I will say is that after each little session that I do, whether it's a sunrise shot, a midday shot, even an astro shot maybe, haven't done that one yet, I'm not sure, I will present the images at the end and Every time they will be labeled differently or the same, but just keep in mind that camera A will not always be the same camera. And the reason is, is because there might be one test where it's very obvious which camera is which, and then you'll know the answer to all the other ones, and I don't think that's as fun. So just maybe write down which one you think is which after each part, or there'll be timestamps down below, and you can just skip to <laughs> the grand finale, if it were. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get started. Uh, I think we're gonna shoot sunrise, maybe sunset tonight, but I definitely think we're gonna shoot sunrise tomorrow morning and put both camera through its paces. So if you're enjoying, feel free to subscribe. If you just like the video, feel free to like the video. Thanks for watching. Let's go. Absolutely stunning morning so far. So this is gonna be our first test of the Canon R5 with the lens versus the iPhone 13 Pro. We're shooting 28 millimeters, which is the equivalent of the main lens on the iPhone 13 Pro. So it's not the ultra wide and it's not the telephoto. It's the lens you probably use the most. Our composition is this fence right here that you can see behind me with the mountains. And it has been absolutely gorgeous so far. So in this test, I'm just shooting the lowest ISO I can possibly go, like I mentioned, before, previously when I talked about all the settings and stuff that I'll be using on both cameras, I'm shooting f11 on my bigger mirrorless camera, and obviously I'm shooting the aperture that the lens will use on the iPhone 13 Pro, which I believe, I wanna say is 2.8, could be 1.8, I can't remember off the top of my head, I'll put it on the screen now. Anyways, I'm gonna keep taking some shots. Uh, I've taken some shots before the sun has come through this area, and then I'm gonna take some shots as the sun peers through. So I'm gonna get a varying amount of light and probably take the best photo of those two, which is exactly what I would do if I was just taking photos with my main camera. I would take photos right now, and then I would take photos later, and then just pick the best one between the two 
or if there's two really good ones, then maybe I'll use both of those. Regardless, I'm gonna keep taking some shots. I'll show you the composition really quick. All right, so here's our composition on our Canon R5. We can tell you have a foreground, middle ground, and background with a fence filling up the bottom of the frame. You have all these nice fall aspen leaves in the middle and some snow-capped peaks with some clouds in the background. You're probably noticing the challenge of this photo, which is going to be that the foreground is dark before the sun comes up over this peak, but the clouds are pretty bright. Now, I think that this camera should be able to capture everything in one photo, but I'll be very curious to see how the iPhone does. Secondly, I'm shooting at f11 on this, like I mentioned before, and I'm focusing on both cameras uh, on the fence in the foreground. That should give me enough enough depth of field to capture everything in a pretty sharp way. Now, I will say that I've already checked the images on this camera to see how the mountains are. They're not pin sharp, but I'm not too concerned about that because I'd really like to compare the ideal conditions of one shot between this camera and the iPhone. So, that's the composition. Hope you're enjoying. I'm going to sit here and wait for the sun to keep coming up. Not sure which photo we're going to end up picking, but for now, that will be the composition for both photos regardless and all we gotta wait for is the light to change. So our next test is going to be where I think the iPhone shines the most, and it is a midday shot. So as a landscape photographer, normally I only shoot during golden hour or before sunrise or golden hour before sunset. Those are typically the times I shoot the most. Every once in a while I'll get a portfolio worthy shot during midday, depending on how the clouds are rolling through, how the light is cascading onto the scene. I'll put an image up that I got a few days ago that was taken at like three in the afternoon, probably one of my favorite images of the year. Anyways. The reason I think that this is where the iPhone is going to shine is because this is its bread and butter. Uh, a lot of the times, the majority of the photos you take, the majority of the photos I take on my phone are moments where I'm just getting out of the car, like here, and just taking photos on the side of the road. So that's where I think it's really going to do well. It has plenty of light to work with, uh, and all of the qualities that it struggles with are not midday shots. So my composition is going to be this road. Very simple 28 mil shot. Again, I might shoot a tele shot with my camera and the phone as well and have those as to compare alongside the composition I'm about to show you. But either way, it's a very normal shot, super easy, super simple, something that someone would take as they're driving along the road. And we're gonna see how it turns out. What I'm gonna wait for the most is there is light cascading. It actually, I think is behind my head on these Aspens up here. That's kind of what I'm gonna wait around for. Let me show you the composition really quick and then I'll show you the images that we end up getting. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this is educational and also somewhat informative. I don't know what else to say. Composition time. All right, so here's our composition. I have to film with my R5 because there's no way you guys can see the backs of the screens if I tried to show you the composition that way. So remember, the left and right of the frame have a little bit more information than you can actually see because I'm filming at 16 by nine. That being said, actually this is a perfect time. You saw the road just get darker in the composition and that's what I've been waiting for where the road is dark and the sky or the aspens in the background are brighter because now I'm actually just gonna stop because I need to take a photo. Composition is simple. It's actually perfect right now. The road has normally been catching the most amount of light which actually makes this particular image hard because it's way too bright. But as of right now, it's in shadow and it looks perfect. And you can see all of the light hitting the trees, which is exactly what we want. So this is the shot that I'm taking. I'm taking up both my phone and my camera. It looks perfect. The sun is coming back out. So you get a better idea of how that road is gonna look. But that's the composition, super simple. Exactly something you would take just on the side of the road. And uh, here are the images from the backs of the cameras. 
they both look fantastic. So thank you for watching. Again, might take one telephoto shot. There's some horses right over here. Um, we'll wait and see, but regardless, here are the images for this shot. Thank you for watching. Okay, so those horses that I wanted to take photos of are right. Let's see if I can uh, get them in there. They're right in there. I want to say probably just hiding from the sun. So that shot's not going to work right now. Maybe we'll take a telephoto shot later, but that was what I had in mind. Uh, so we're going to continue on. I think the next test will either be for sunset or maybe a telephoto shot. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying. And uh, here's me from the future. Whew. Good morning, everyone. It is absolutely beautiful this morning. Rained all last night. You can tell there's a ton of atmosphere going on. First thing is, I am right next to a major road. This is one of the, if not the most popular spot to shoot either sunrise or sunset in the San Juan Mountains. So I'm not entirely sure if I'll have to voice over this or not. I'm gonna be testing the telephoto lens on the iPhone 13 Pro this morning versus my 7200, shooting at about 78, which is the equivalent of what the iPhone could shoot at. I've already captured a few moody shots, but uh, the color is now hitting the clouds over on the other part of the frame that you can't see. So I might capture a few of those with the normal lens at 28 mil, but I'm gonna to try to stick to the tele lens for now. I am curious how the results will be because I know that the telephoto sensor and lens is supposed to not be as good as the main camera. They always put more emphasis on the camera that you use the most, but we'll have to wait and see. So stick around. Thank you for watching. I'll try to include you in a few of the compositions, but I'm not sure how much I'll be able to talk over them just because there's people around me and there's those cars driving by. So thank you for watching. Uh, here's more stuff and then probably the photos. Yeah. Time to wake up. <laughs>
from the iPhone photo. I don't necessarily think it was noise, ISO noise. I actually think it was something along the lines of all of those little details and textures, because the sensor is so small, it just doesn't pick them up as well. And the tonalities in the clouds are just not as strong as they are on the R5. So if I go onto the R5 image and we zoom into the tonality of the clouds here, you can really see all of those colors in the clouds there. And I edited these pretty similarly, but you get so much more granularity between the textures and the shades of the color there. You'll also notice there is no noise up here in comparison. Now, I tried to change it in the edit. I tried to edit a little bit better to just help with the iPhone, and I got it looking pretty good. Obviously, from when you're zoomed out, it's actually really hard to tell the difference. But that is something that was a pretty obvious one in this image that you might not have seen until I zoomed in. Okay, 20 minutes later, I took these photos, and there's a lot more light to work with for the iPhone. And this particular image, camera A, was also the iPhone. So I got these really close in terms of the edit. You can tell the tonalities is a little bit more red from the Canon R5, but this is all stuff you can change when you're shooting in RAW, so it's not something you really have to worry about. You'll also notice that the highlights are a little bit brighter in the R5 edit than I left them in the Apple edits. But overall, both of these images are really, really great uh, in terms of their quality and tones. You'll notice that that tonality in the clouds is much less apparent because it doesn't have those red tones in the background uh, and it's harder to see. It's just because the iPhone had more light to work with. So would love to know if you got this one right. I think it's pretty close. Okay, so next up is the second test we did, which was the midday shot. And this is where I thought the iPhone was going to shine. And it really did, even though I was pretty blown away by those sunrise shots. So in this particular test, the iPhone was camera B. But if I go back and forth between these images, it is really hard to tell the difference after these edits. So you'll see there's just a tad more light, a tad more dollop of brightness here in the mountains area of the iPhone shot. And obviously, if I zoom in, you get a lot more detail in those tones. But again, when you're zoomed out, it is really hard to see the difference. Very surprised. And this is going to be one of those situations where a lot of the photos you take with your iPhone 13 Pro or your camera in general, if that's on your phone, are images like this one. They're not going to be sunrise shots like I was setting up to do. So this is a great example of just what you can get away with with your camera phone. Okay, so the next test was sunrise. Yes, sunrise. And I have two tests for that particular image. So camera B for the black and white photo was the iPhone photo. And I actually probably shouldn't be showing you this because I actually messed up on this photo, but I thought it would made more sense to show you because it's more realistic that you may mess up photos or you will have photos you mess up when you're taking shots. So this particular image, I did not hold the camera still enough for perfect sharpness. Now, if I had locked it down on my tripod, I would have been able to get that, but there's just a tad bit of camera shake. So the image is not as sharp as it could be. That being said, when I'm zoomed out and you compare these two images, they're still pretty close. Now, if you printed these in any large manner, you're going to notice the difference. Obviously, check out the detail difference when I zoom in to the R5 versus the iPhone. That's just where the R5 is always going to win out, though. Pretty, <laughs> Still pretty insane that I messed up this shot by not holding it still enough and still got a pretty great result. And I wanted to convert to black and white. Also, remember that both this shot and the next shot were using the telephoto lens. So that particular camera sensor is not as sensitive to light. So you just need to remember that when you are out shooting with your iPhone 13 Pro. All right, so the last image. Camera B, again, was the iPhone 13 Pro. But when I edited these, they are really close. And I actually did something special on this edit where I did my Canon R5 edit, and then I actually just copy and pasted that edit to the iPhone, and then just briefly adjusted a few things to make sure that it matched, and this was the result. It is pretty close. There's not a lot of giveaways in this particular image in terms of which one is which. There's a lot of great tonalities. This is the iPhone shot in the iPhone shot up here where the highlights are. And obviously in the shadows, there's going to be more detail in the R5 shot. But I still have so much detail in the R5 shot or the, excuse me, the iPhone shot. I was really, really surprised. And that was one thing I noticed doing these edits is just how much I could push those raw files from the iPhone. I was really impressed. Uh, and it's something that I'm going to try to work more on the future in is that I can really take some solid photos with the iPhone 13 Pro. One last thing is that some of the shots were taken using the native camera app in RAW from Apple. Those shots were 28 megs each, whereas the ProCam RAWs were only 9.5 megs to 10 megs each. 
Not entirely sure what the, sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> not entirely sure what the difference is in terms of quality, but obviously I have to assume the ones that are being taken in the Apple app are a little higher quality just because they are larger files. That being said, some of these were Apple shots and some of these were ProCam shots and I can't really tell the difference all that much. Anyways, those are the comparisons. I hope that was educational to you or at least entertaining. I would love to know how many you got right or wrong down below. I would love to know what you think about the video in general. So if you end up really liking this content, you can subscribe. But if you just like the video and it was enter entertaining, you can like it or you can just click away. That's okay with me too. I'm going to put a few more images on the screen that I've taken with my iPhone 13 Pro right here at the end. Just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week. Later.